So, evidently, the appearing in 417 is the rescue of believers from the coming wrath, seven-year tribulation period, which includes resurrection of believers who are asleep in the Lord, plus us, if we remain alive. Neither alive nor dead in Christ, believers are in the Lord's presence when he appears to rescue them. On the other hand, 1 Thessalonians 3.13 stipulates that believers accompany him in his, his second coming. So the appearing in 4.17 is not, is not the Lord's second coming, for believers were not yet present with him. They don't, he doesn't come in the clouds with you. He comes in the clouds and pulls you up to him to go back to heaven for seven years. And then he comes, we come with him in his second coming. 1 Thessalonians 8 to 10. Chapter 1. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. For they themselves, believers everywhere, report what kind of reception you gave us, Paul, Silas, and Timothy. They tell you how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Verse 10, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Verse Thess 1.10, remember that. That's in chapter 1, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Here's the Greek. The wrath in view is not an eternal wrath, because it is not so described. Rather, it is described as an imminent one coming to the earth. <coughs> A wrath coming to the earth. And to wait until and to wait while on earth for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. He'll take you out, and then the wrath will immediately proceed. Proceed. <clears throat> this coming wrath is portrayed in 110 as that which may occur during the Thessalonian believer's mortal lifetime, may, from which our Lord is coming to rescue those alive on the earth at that time, or any time, then stipulate, believers in mortal bodies on the earth are therefore to wait to be rescued by Jesus from the coming wrath. Now you may be present with the Lord, asleep, or going through the terrible times leading up to the point where you needed to be taken off the planet because the wrath is beginning to begin. I don't know if I want to, you know, I mean, it's pretty close for me, I, I think. And I don't know if I want to see any more of this nonsense of people just misbehaving, murders, you now we had the pandemic, uh, all kinds of craziness because of, of that. People just act out of, of violently. I, I was attacked by knife point, once with a face, a bottle in my face, and punched in my pacemaker, and shoved and pushed around and blocked from getting in my own building because of uh, the virus. And all I did was to, to try to stay distant. I wasn't doing anything that provoked that. So believers in mortal bodies on the earth are therefore to wait to be rescued by Jesus from this coming wrath, evidently to occur on the earth, neither avoiding nor being protected from God's temporal wrath while remaining on the earth, nor eternal wrath is what would be described as being rescued from the coming wrath, as some think it might be, which one would wait for Jesus on the earth to rescue them from, as some contend. Yeah, somebody's about ready to stab you in the knife. Jesus says, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. He's mine. Ah, I don't want to get that far. Eternal wrath is not described as the coming wrath to the earth, the seven-year tribulation period. All those <coughs> who are dest destined for eternal wrath will be brought to God's judgment and subject to it there, and not on earth as some contend the latter. Furthermore, there have been and will be demonstrations of God's temporal wrath on the earth, which may or may not be avoided by individuals on the earth. They're perhaps the ones that have become believers in those days. There were a lot of converted Christians during that time because they, when they left on the earth, they weren't believers. <coughs> None of these demonstrations, however, are in view in 1 Thessalonians 1.10 because avoidance of, or protection from wrath or remaining on the earth is not the same thing as having the Lord Jesus come to rescue one from it. But you're going to just hang around, look in the crowds as you nearly get killed? The next notable wrath of God is not his eternal wrath, but his final temporal wrath on the earth, the seven-year tribulation period. 
when it, it's just the world is about ready to just implode with all kinds of atomic weapons and destruction, and then Jesus is just going to come and fix it all. That's a great way, by the way. I shared my faith five or six times in the last week. I said, you know, all this stuff, it's leading up to something horrific on the earth. I don't quote Bible or anything else, although I could, but I don't. I don't try to hit people right in the face with that. And I said, but, you know, who's going to rescue us from all this? Because people are getting worse. I said, yeah, people agree, yeah. Well, there is one guy who's going to come to rescue us from it all. And they look at you. Wow, really? Yes. They ask me, well, who, 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 who do you think that is? I said, you know, the guy from a point upstairs, the guy from upstairs. Most of them get, oh, you mean Jesus? Yes, I'm connecting with what they already understand. And then I bring the gospel to them. And I said, now you're going to be left. You're going to be taken off in your clothes and shoes and wallet and everything's going to be left. You have far more to, better to go to than leave. You might as well leave that stuff behind. And people go, yeah, yeah. You leave them with a positive note. So get busy. Time is short. So none of these demonstrations, however, are in view in 110. Because avoidance or protection from wrath while remaining on the earth is not the same thing as having the Lord Jesus come to rescue one from it. The next notable wrath of God is not eternal wrath, but his final temporal wrath on the earth, the seven-year tribulation period. <clears throat> so God's final temporal wrath on the earth, which those mortal believing, believers alive at the time will be rescued from, is in view. All left for the unbelievers. Notice that the phrase, who rescues, literally the one delivering us from the, the coming wrath, is in view as opposed to being preserved or protected from the coming wrath as some contend. The word rescues has in view a physical removal of believers from the planet as opposed to remaining on it and being protected or preserved while, like, like in, a, in a special building or something, while still being exposed to God's wrath as it crashes all around them as some contend. I don't, you know, they, people just want to read stuff in there, and it's utter nonsense. Being rescued from a burning building is not to remain in the building and, and have some kind of a fire protection over you, or hose down, and stay exposed to the flames yet preserved from burning, but to, re be, re but to be removed from the building entirely. Scripture describes God's final earthly wrath to consist of anarchy, fires, contamination of water and land, destruction of human plant and animal life, earthquakes, volcanoes, wars, pestilence, all on a never-before-experienced worldwide scale from which one would not be rescued without removal from the planet. Well, how about the diseases? You're going to be climbing over bodies. How about a third of the population dying in a very short period of time, and then another third will be climbing over bodies? How are you going to get any food to eat, water to drink that won't contaminate, be contaminated? Verses 1, 8 to 10, address the sure hope of the rescue from God's final temporal wrath of believers who are alive on earth, which in Paul's perspective may or may not occur in the lifetime of the Thessalonian believers addressed by him in this epistle before the final earthly wrath of God share. This is what the word hope was referring to in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, wherein believers, but not the rest of men, will be rescued from the coming worldwide wrath on the earth by the Son of God, for whom they wait to come from heaven to rescue them from their exposure to that worldwide wrath. I don't know if I want to get up that close, to tell you the truth. This implies a transformation into resurrection bodies and removal of the believers from the planet into Christ's presence until the wrath is over. This is affirmed in verses of First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 17, in view of mortal believers being caught up into the clouds in the air, an uninhabitable location for the, no, the normal physical temporal body, unless there was such a transformation into a resurrection body. And that's the kind of resurrection body, wouldn't that be remarkable? Where can you go then? All over space. Wow. Compare First Thess 2.19. Well, what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is appearing. Here's the Greek. What is our here, our joy, a crowd of boasting? Or are not even you before the Lord, our Jesus, that is appearing, coming in the presence of? 
Notice that at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in 219, believers will already be in his presence, which is stipulated as their hope or joy or crown of rejoicing. On the other hand, verse 110 previously stipulated that Jesus is coming to rescue believers from the coming worldwide earthly wrath, implying transformation into resurrection bodies and removal of the believers from the planet, because the air is pretty thin up there and pretty cold, bringing them into and keeping them in his presence until the wrath is over and for there. And it says forever after we'll be with him. Wow. The coming forever companionship of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one whom there'll be nobody else you would rather be with. After this, our Lord returns in his second coming with us to the surface of the planet with church age believers who will be ever be in his presence. It says so. Read First Thess one ten. First Thess three thirteen. To the end he may establish in your hearts unblameable in holiness before God by the grace of God, even our fathers, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. Unblameable. That's not our doing. We're not going to be so hot, but we'll be blessed. And as we confess our sins, move on, make an effort, move in the direction the Holy Spirit points us more and more and more, we'll be blessed with the declaration of for, for perfection. And we get credited for that. But the blamelessness is his doing, not ours. All is saying. So first Thess one ten depicts the coming, parousia, and appearing of Jesus Christ wherein believers who are physically alive on the earth at the time are awaiting his appearing. In the clouds and in the air, evidently not on the surface of the earth. People try, well, he came down in his second coming to the earth. No, this is not coming down to the, the surface of the planet. It's up there in the clouds we go to meet him and not yet in his presence at which time he comes, he will rescue them from the coming wrath and bring them into his presence. Verse 219 indicates that believers will be present with the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to touch down upon the earth at his second coming. But that's not the Christian church believers. That's the tribulation saints. Got that? Evidently, they have been in this presence since they were rescued. Then, in verse 313, we have in, in view the second coming of our Lord to the surface of the earth already with the saints who are accompanying him from the church age as he comes from heaven to the earth. Evidently, the saints were in his presence at this coming beforehand, having already been rescued and brought into his presence before the wrath began, back to heaven with him to be uh, accounted for at the judgment seat of Christ for rewards, hence, or non-rewards, hence we have a second coming to end the wrath which began after his previous appearing, appearing to rescue the saints from the earth by removing them from the earth to remain in his presence until the wrath is ended. Since the coming of our Lord a second time directly to the earth, as he did the first time, is defined as the second coming of a kind. The, the rapture is not part of the second coming. It's a different kind. He doesn't touch the earth. Then we might conclude that the coming of our Lord is to rescue believers from the coming wrath is a different kind of coming, as were his appearances coming to the earth in Old Testament times, and was not directly to the earth as corroborated later in the passage in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. Now we go to point seven. Faithful believers will have the right to enjoy the fruit of the tree of life. This is all part of this category. What's going to happen in eternity for us, we believers? Revelation 22, 12 to 15. Jesus said, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes. Alternate uh, reading. Blessed are those, are they that do his commandments. We'll see. That they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside of the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Are you amongst those? Let's see. Now I notice the alternate, the manuscripts of the King James translator's favorite read that keeping on doing his commandments, but other manuscripts read what is to be rendered that keep on washing their robes. Well, the reading, keep commandments.